The witness of the apostles is that Jesus was utterly faithful to the will of the Father, that he was without sin. But that does not mean that he was never tempted. In fact, the pastor who wrote Hebrews declared that Jesus was tempted in all things like we are. It is because he shared our temptations that he is our sympathetic high priest. One more thing. Jesus represents a new Adam. Adam was created sinless and ruled in paradise. Even so, when tempted, he sinned. Jesus was sinless, but was born under the law into a world corrupted by sin. Even so, when tempted, he remained faithful to God. Matthew writes, Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he then became hungry, and the tempter came. This incident takes place shortly after Jesus is baptized in water, anointed by the Holy Spirit, and affirmed by the Father as the beloved Son of God. The Spirit leads Jesus into the wilderness. The Spirit leads Jesus into this spiritual warfare. The tempter came to Adam in the garden, and now the tempter has come to Jesus in the wilderness. It was in the wilderness that Israel's faithfulness to God was tested, and now Jesus is tested. The same enemy that challenged Adam now challenges Jesus, and the future of the cosmos is at stake. The devil challenges Jesus' status as the divine son with the words, If you are the Son of God. There was no doubt that Jesus is human, the son of Mary. The devil sought to challenge Jesus' divinity. He challenges Jesus' divinity by attacking the weaknesses of his humanity. Matthew writes, And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. This is the temptation to deny the relevance of God. It is not accidental that the temptation of Adam and Eve was about food. The fruit of the tree of life is the knowledge of God. The fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is knowledge without God. In other words, this is the temptation to self-sufficiency. This suggests that humans are utterly secular with no need for God. In the words of the Apostle Paul in Romans 1.21, for even though they knew God, they did not glorify Him as God or give thanks, but they became futile in their hearts, and their foolish heart was darkened. Jesus' response to the devil acknowledges the human need for God. Yes, God will provide bread for the body, but the gospel is more than economics, more than food and shelter. Humans are not just secular creatures. Human flourishing requires divine nourishment. In Him we live and move and exist. The Word of God is more desirable than gold and tastes sweeter than a honeycomb. It is as we live in obedience to the words of God that God blesses us with all things necessary to a flourishing life. Jesus exhorted, but seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Matthew writes, Then the devil took him into the holy city and had him stand on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will, give his, he will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again it is written, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. This is the temptation to deny the faithfulness of God. Like the serpent in the garden tempted Adam and Eve by misrepresenting the words of God, the devil in the wilderness misused Scripture to tempt Jesus. In John 8, Jesus accused some of the Jewish leaders of being like the devil because they misrepresented the truth of God's Word. They knew the words of Scripture, but they did not understand them. When Holy Scripture is misused to manipulate people, people begin to doubt the truthfulness of God's Word. The Apostle Paul encourages us, Be diligent to present yourself approved to God as a workman who does not need to be ashamed, accurately handling the Word of Truth. Otherwise, the words of Scripture become godless and empty chatter, leading to ungodliness. Also, 
We're sometimes tempted to deny the faithfulness of God because of the trials and tribulations of life. After God delivered Israel from Egypt, the Israelites began to challenge the faithfulness of God as they encountered the difficulties of the wilderness. They asked, Is God among us or not? And on the cross, Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He was tempted to doubt the faithfulness of God. Life presents many difficulties and tribulations which can sometimes provoke us to unbelief, to wonder if God cares. But the resurrection of Jesus demonstrates that Jesus was not forsaken and that God can indeed be trusted. Matthew writes, Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these things I will give you if you fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Go, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only. This is the temptation of a divided allegiance. As the people of Israel journeyed through the wilderness, they were tempted to forget the God who delivered them out of Egypt. As they camped at the foot of Mount Sinai, they constructed a golden calf which represented an Egyptian God. Generation after generation, they were guilty of idolatry, devoting themselves to the gods of the nations, even offering their children as sacrifices. Likewise, we are sometimes tempted by the power and pleasure of this present age. The Apostle John warns us, Do not love the world, nor the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the boastful pride of life, is not from the Father, but is from the world. And the world is passing away, and also its lust. But the one who does the will of God abides forever. Jesus was committed to do the will of the Father. The Father had affirmed him as his only beloved Son. The words of Psalm 2.8 established the purpose of God. The Lord said to me, You are my Son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will make the nations your heritage, and the ends of the earth your possession. Jesus would indeed inherit the nations of the earth by faithful obedience to the divine will. Likewise, Jesus has told us that we cannot serve two masters lest we love one and hate the other. We will inherit the kingdom of God only if we serve God with an undivided heart.